So, good morning to all the participants at the outset. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, sir. Very good morning to each one of you. And uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, the HRDC Center. A special thanks to Dr. Nandan Swami, sir, for having introduced me to the audience uh, in this session. So, for the next 90 minutes, I would like to share my little knowledge on the topic online and e-learning with each one of you. So let me begin the session as we already uh, mentioned the topic and overview of online and e-learning. And uh, I have already been introduced to you. You please note down my email ID. And also, I mean, the email ID in case for any, uh, you know, comments or queries or issues, I think you can even uh, write to my email ID. I can respond sincerely for any of your uh, uh, questions or the comments, right? Uh, definitely, we'll be having an interaction after the session and uh, even otherwise also, at any point of time, you can just interact with me or you can just share your views with this mail ID. So with this, uh, let me begin the session with an inspiration or a quote that uh, the greatest pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. I think all of you can agree with this uh, motivational statement that uh, many a times whenever we are uh, attempting a new thing, the people may say that you cannot do that. Uh, definitely there will be a resistance. So in spite of that, if we try and if we become successful, then definitely we get a very greatest pleasure. And that is what the meaning. So many times we have obstacles and a lot of constraints. And uh, in spite of that, if we are successful in our attempts, then definitely we'll be, uh, you know, we'll be having a great pleasure. And that's what the meaning. And with this quote, and let's move on to the presentation outline. I will try as much as possible within the stimulate, you know, stipulated time. Right. Uh, in case, in certain cases, it may need more, uh, you know, explanation or interaction. Uh, at some point of time, it's a simple understanding. Okay. So, with all that, uh, I will try to cover the intended, you know, coverage of the content to you in the next uh, 90 minutes. So, the presentation outline covers the introduction to the topic, the types of learning importance of e-learning, characteristics of e-learning, e-learning methods, e-learning process, a squat analysis, tools and companies, followed by summary and conclusion with the references. So these are the points I would like to share with you today. Now, uh, let's begin with a very small introduction, okay? So, right. So definitely uh, in this era, we are all living in a knowledge-based economy. And today information, because of this information era, we have a volume of information, right? And the data, but how to manage the data and the information is a very challenging task. But in addition to that, the advancements in technology, globalization, and intensive competition and rapid changes in the customer needs all have definitely uh, made a lot of changes in our education system or in our business system or altogether in the society, right? So to be able to consistently grow, cope with these ch changes and stay ahead of the game, the Oak Force must keep itself constantly updated with the new concept, skills, and technology. So here, friends, definitely we have to agree with this, uh, these words uh, because just two years back before this pandemic, including even the professionals, the computer professionals were not aware of this online classes. 
right? So only the corporate people were uh, interacting with their you know, team members through online apps and all, but we were not aware of it. But because of the need, right? Because of the need, because of this pandemic, we tried the possibilities, the alternative ways to address the issues, right? Accordingly, we understand that there is a technology. And with the technology, we try to reduce the risk or overcome some of the challenges which we are facing because of this pandemic. And accordingly, we all have learned a lot of things and particularly in the, with respect to the technology. And very similarly, because today we are all living in a knowledge-based economy. And also we are understanding the technology, a lot of advancements are there in the technology. And definitely we have to get updated with the technology and then we have to move ahead. So then only uh, we can compete with the other persons or other institutions or even the technology as well. So that's why it's uh, very, very important for all of us to stay updated with the uh, current technology and we have to adopt that and then we have to make our work and uh, more comfortable and our stay more comfortable and many things as such, right? That's what is the whole uh, summary of these simple words. So with this, now let me uh, get into the topic that's learning because we need to understand the importance of e-learning and online learning. So let's begin for the sake of continuity, what is learning? So it is the process or experience of gaining knowledge or skill. So because we are all teachers, we know how that experience of gaining knowledge and skill definitely enhances the quality of life. So definitely, if at all we want to interact in this knowledgeable uh, society, we have to gain a lot of knowledge and also we should have an experience in handling the things and we have to acquire the skill and that is possible with the learning. So any form of learning, it is not that we have to go to school and learn or we have to go to education institution and learn. In everyday activities, we can learn many things from others. Sometimes the environment teaches and sometimes the people will teach us, right? The situation will teach us. So those are all the source of learning. So all put together, we call it as the process or experience of gaining knowledge or a skill is called uh, learning. So the relatively permanent change in a person's knowledge or behavior due to experience. So definitely, uh, maybe when our learning our knowledge is limited, we can definitely make a mistake, right? Because we don't know whether it's a mistake or not, we may commit a mistake. But when we get a knowledge about that, then definitely we try to avoid such mistakes here after. So according to my opinion, learning means if we commit a mistake unknowingly, and if we are aware of that mistake, and if we try to avoid committing such mistakes, next time, then that is nothing but a learning, right? So maybe there is a possibility that every day we make a new mistake, but every time when we commit a mistake, if we learn something out of it, and we will be aware of that mistake, and we try to avoid such mistake next time, maybe one fine day, we will be a little more perfect in our activities, right? That was we have already learned through many uh, sources, and that's what is the experience, in fact, Okay, so it's a permanent change in the person's knowledge or a behavior due to experience. So a process that leads to change, which occurs as a result of experience and increases the potential of improved performance and the future learning. So definitely when we learn something new or when we get an experience, then definitely the future learning in that direction may be easy and quite efficient and as well as effective. So the definitely the teachers who have put in maybe 10 or 15 years of experience can learn new things quite fast when compared to uh, non-experienced people, right? So that is true even in any other activity for that matter. And that's what is the general understanding that 
whatever that experience we gain, that definitely increases the potential of improved performance and the future learning. I hope all of us have experienced it, and that is true. So with this, now let's look at the types of learning. So uh, today we are all living in the digital era, hence we call it as a digital learning. So what is a digital learning? It's a type of modern learning option, which includes a combination of e-learning, online learning, and blended learning along with offline digital learning. So definitely two decades back or three decades back, we were all uh, very much uh, particular with our textbooks. When we used to keep the textbooks at our homes or we used to go to the library and where we sit and read the textbooks in the library. That was the uh, scenario maybe some two, three decades back. And today it's not like that because of the advancement in the technology. We can get everything with our fingertips. Right? If at all you want any information, then you can just go to the Google search and you can search for the piece of information and you can get more and more. It's an ocean. You can get a lot of data, a lot of information, right? So a lot of material will be made available. So that's what is the digital learning. It's a modern type of learning option, which includes a combination of e-learning. So we will be seeing what e-learning is, online and blended learning, along with the offline digital learning. So here, the meaning is we will be having the you know, uh, digital environment where our uh, learning materials will be presented in a digital form, not in a uh, traditional uh, form, right? A hard copy, right? No, but now it's a soft copy. We call it a soft copy. Even the textbooks are digitized and we can access to those textbooks online and we can read the textbooks right on the screen or with our smart uh, devices like a mobile. And that's how we have switched over from a traditional uh, learning reading to a modern or a digital learning, okay? So that's what is a digital learning. Now let's see what is this e-learning. It's a type of learning where internet technologies are used to deliver a broad array of solutions that enhance knowledge and performance. The students and the teacher interact online in this type of learning. So of course, if this was presented just a, a decade back or two decades back, right? so everyone would have been surprised. But today, it's not like that because we are quite familiar, right? Because we are very quite familiar with this e-learning. There is nothing to surprise. And we are very much familiar. And also because today, internet has become quite cheap, then definitely everyone is affordable and able to access to internet. And because of that today, e-learning has become more comfortable and affordable as well, right? So that's how uh, it delivers a broad array of solutions to enhance the knowledge and the performance. The students and the teacher interact online in this type of learning. So later, I would like to give you some more information regarding the e-learning platforms. And many of you might have already uh, heard about the SWAM platform and MOOCs courses. And definitely even in the new education policy, there is a statement that are, uh, you know, the, guide, the regulation says that the students can earn 40% uh, of the credits through online mode, and that can be uh, considered for their regular program in order to get a degree. So that's what is the uh, status today. And in that context, the e-learning plays a significant role. And of course, it offers many other advantages, which we are going to see in very short. So with this information, now let's look at the blended learning. It's a kind of virtual learning, which combines the traditional learning of face-to-face -face interactions of the teacher with online interactions of a remote teacher through a video conferencing to Microsoft Link, uh, Easy Talks, Cloud Meeting, etc. So definitely when we heard the word a blended learning, it is like we are trying to integrate both the online and e-learning with a traditional learning, I mean, face-to-face -face instructions in a classroom. So definitely it works out very well and it is a very uh, you know, good practice and it offers many advantages, right? So definitely uh, any technology always comes with some limitations or we can say the disadvantages. 
but it is up to us to minimize the disadvantages, right? How we use it that makes us uh, or makes the system uh, in a you know, more uh, benefits or provides more benefits. And so it's at our hand and we have to make use of the system in a constructive way, not in a destructive way. Or we have to maximize the advantages and minimize the disadvantages, right? So in this context, this modern or a new way of learning with a traditional learning, if they are blended each other, that offers uh, several advantages. And that is what is a blended learning. And even in many schools uh, during this uh, pandemic, and even after this also, uh, many institutions have adopted this blended learning where the students can go to the classes, uh, you know, maybe three days in a week, or in alternative days and in the other days they can listen to online sessions and that will be more comfortable for the students as well as for the teachers right and that's what is the blended learning even the blended learning concept has been very well explored even the corporate sector where the employees can go to their offices uh, three days in a week and the remaining three days they can work from home or they can visit the offices alternate days and that's so they can even practice the blended learning concepts in their uh, meetings and learning and interaction with the stakeholders and many things as such. So when it comes to the online learning, so definitely it can be described as the combination of blended learning and e-learning and the key element is the internet, okay? So of course, many times we use all these words uh, more uh, synonymously, but if we want to look at a very precise definition, uh, definitely there will be a certain difference between uh, these things like online learning and e-learning and uh, blended learning, uh, digital learning and etc. So in this context, if we just put it in a, a nutshell, right, uh, we can, if at all we want to visualize this, so the types of learning can be uh, put in this way, at the top we can see a digital learning, so everything is driven with a uh, technology right, with a computer technology particularly, or we can call it as a smart machines or smart devices. So the digital learning is supported with those smart devices. So within this digital learning framework, there is an online learning and an offline learning. So this offline learning means I have downloaded the soft copies of the textbooks, maybe it is a general textbook or it can be a PowerPoint presentation means uh, handouts or it can be in the PDF form or in a Word form or in any other form, it doesn't matter. I have downloaded it and I have stored in a storage device and I can use that material as and when required and that's how I learn, right? So that's what is called offline digital learning. So I don't need uh, internet technology but I have a soft copy of those learning materials with me, but definitely I need to use the smart devices and with those smart devices, I can uh, learn something with those material and that's what is called the offline learning. But when it comes to the online learning, we can further classify it as a blended learning and e-learning, where in a blended learning, as we already mentioned that we are trying to put the uh, traditional way of learning and also uh, this modern uh, learning. And again, there's a online learning altogether, you know, e-learning altogether, right? So with this, uh, now let's move on to the next very important point, why e-learning? Having understood what is e-learning or generally uh, digital learning, so particularly, definitely, uh, we will be having a question, why e-learning? So of course, many of us are already, uh, because we are familiar, uh, definitely we can have an answer to this particular question, but still uh, to make it much more precise and continuous, here I have presented an answer uh, which has been stated by the well-known personalities and also one of such personalities is a John Chambers of CEO of Cisco Systems. What he says is, there are two greatest great equalizers in life, that is the internet and the education. By combining the two, e-learning will be the great equalizer in the next uh, century. By eliminating the barriers of time, distance, and socioeconomic status, individuals can now take charge of their own lifelong learning. So suppose if we interpret this statement as given by uh, John Chambers of Cisco Systems, 
So definitely, once uh, maybe uh, two decades back or uh, maybe a decade back, so before this uh, revolution in this uh, internet technologies or in the science and technology advancements, so definitely the time was a constraint, the distance was a constraint, and socioeconomic status was a constraint, right? So definitely a person from a poor background, right, cannot uh, you know, uh, take up a good education. Right, because he cannot go to uh, higher level institutions because of uh, the time, or because definitely he or she may not be affordable to learn in such a uh, you know uh, low, uh, standard, right, with that institutions. So definitely, the time is the another thing because many times they have seen that the people uh, struggling a lot just to earn their bread for a day. So with that situation, how can they learn? And because the time is a very uh, important thing for them because in a traditional way of learning, the students have to go to school maybe from morning nine, evening five o'clock. Maybe that time, you no, know, uh, I mean, for some people, it may not permit or it may not permit them to go to the school because at that point of time, they're engaged in some other activity. The other thing is the distance, right? So because of these barriers, many a times, uh, many people uh, were not able to uh, get a good education. But today, because of this uh, internet technologies, our advancement in the science and technology, so we can definitely eliminate these barriers, that is the time, distance, and also the social economic status. The students can learn at any point of time, anywhere, irrespective of their socioeconomic status. Right. If at all you want to you know, listen to the uh, lectures given by the eminent personalities in uh, abroad university, a uh, well-known university is like a Harvard University, or a Michigan State University, or a Carnegie Mellon University, or any other universities of that standard. If at all you want to listen to the professors delivering a lecture on various topics, right? So definitely, it is not possible in traditional uh, mode of uh, learning. So, but because of this internet and because of the technology, right, the videos are recorded and they are made available for us to search and download and we can listen to the lectures even by the eminent personalities in the top class universities. So there is nothing like a barrier of time. You can listen to them anywhere, anytime, irrespective of the social status. And because of that, definitely we can see that is the equalizers in life. Right, so that's what is stated by the John Chambers. And apart from that, so definitely uh, these technologies and the concept of e-learning and online-learning expands opportunity of education for everyone. As we already stated, so everyone will get an opportunity to learn things of their interest. And then the quality of learning can also be enhanced with e-learning the delivery of learning, it increases the delivery of learning and also improves efficiency of teaching. So many times some people may comment that uh, it will spoil the education system. No, I don't think so. It is all our perception. Okay, so definitely it will not going to spoil, but it definitely supports and makes the system much more uh, effective and efficient as such. So the expense opportunity of education to everyone, as we already stated, you can register for an online course offered by a professor in Harvard University or in UK University or any other universities online and you can learn very effectively. Of course, the quality of learning will be the same. Right? So whenever you have registered for a course online, which is delivered by an eminent personality from a, a top class university, and that quality of learning will be reach to everyone, whoever has registered and whoever has been the student of that, definitely they will get the same quality of learning. And because of that, that increase the delivery of learning as well. Okay, so because uh, time is not a barrier, distance is not a barrier, and because of that, definitely it increases the delivery of learning. At the same time, efficiency of teaching can also be enhanced. Because you all remember that way back when we were the students, uh, at uh, fifth standard or the seventh standard, we knew that the teachers used to write everything on the board. For example, if a biology teacher wants to explain the pancreas or a mitochondria, etc., uh, she used to write the diagram and then uh, explain the concepts. 
but today it's not like that because of the technology we can animate and we can you know segment each and every part of the uh, human uh, body or organ and we can present in a, a very colorful way so that we can provide a, you know a real time uh, you know uh, something like a real feeling to the students so that they can learn very efficiently so all these things are possible with the support of technology under this e learning platform or environment so with this now uh, if at all i want to uh, put all these things in a precise words so e learning can be as effective as a traditional learning at a, a learning and a training at a lower cost so definitely we have to accept that and think uh, the today's uh, sessions or this online uh, orientation program sessions could be the best example for uh, this because uh, what would happen is you supposed to uh, come down to university of mysore traveling uh, from far away places and you have to uh, take accommodations here and the food everything if at all you want to attend this orientation program but now look at here at a lower cost even for uh, hrdc the expense has been reduced and even for the participants the expense has been reduced sitting at your home uh, definitely can listen to uh, lectures right so that's how e learning can be as effective as a traditional at a lower cost and e learning reaches a wider target audience by engaging learners who have difficulty attending conventional classrooms so many times though we have interest in attending uh, uh, particular courses but maybe because of inconvenience right because of inconvenience it may not be possible for us to attend maybe because uh, the distance is a barrier and the time is a barrier but with the support of this e learning so definitely uh, we can uh, achieve that right and that's what is the point then delivery costs for e learning are considerably lower than those for classroom facilities instructor time part spent travel and job time lost to attend the classroom sessions so these are some of the points we can always keep in uh, whenever we uh, think of e learning and its uh, importance so apart from this e learning can also offer effective instruction methods such as uh, practicing with associated feedback so we cannot expect all the time the teachers will be there for you in a traditional learning so because we have already seen that uh, a teacher may take class in the classroom for an hour and he can deliver the things in a class and maybe it's difficult for a uh, teacher to concentrate with each and every student in a class of 80 students and even sometimes students may not get the time to interact with the teacher in a traditional uh, classroom environment so but in this e learning environment and the platform or the framework definitely you can practice with the associated feedback for example you have learned a particular concept and to check whether you have learned properly or not there will be a set of questionnaires immediately popped up as and when you have studied that particular topic and you are requested to answer those questions and if you have answered those questions satisfactorily then it will be evaluated automatically by the system learning management system and you will get a feedback that how well you have learned that particular topic based on the answers what you have provided in uh, as a response to the questions right so with that itself there will be a constant right uh, learning mechanism every time you can assess yourself whether you have learned it properly or not and even in sometimes if you have any confusions and all and that can also be uh, clarified by raising some questions and getting relevant answers to the questions and that so it's very interactive so practicing with associated feedback combining collaboration activities with a self paced study so definitely Uh, depending upon our time and uh, ability we can learn the things incrementally right how much you have to learn that can be decided by how much effort you can put in within the time within the available time because the time may vary from uh, person to person because i can put every day say four hours of time for some other people it may not be possible for them to put four hours of effort to learn something they may need you know they can put only two hours of time so uh, definitely some people can learn faster and some people may not learn that faster so definitely uh, we can have a collaboration activities with peers and we can uh, study with our self faced right you know uh, environment so that's another very interesting thing so personalizing learning paths based on the learner needs and using simulation and games 
So this you might have already uh, know, learned or you, might, you may be familiar, right? Whenever we are teaching uh, you know, to the kids, so we use some simulations and the games and we can make the kids to learn better. And also because of these technologies and all, so we can personalize the learning paths. Some may be interested in one particular topic, some may be interested in some other topic at the point of time. So definitely you can personalize according to your interest and you can learn the things, right? But that may not be possible in a traditional learning in a real-time environment. But the same real-time environment, in case of e-learning, uh, we can definitely uh, do all those things. So the personal learning paths, based on the learning needs, learner needs, and using the simulation and the games. So with this, all learners receive the same quality of instruction because there is no dependence on a specific instructor. Okay, so this is what we have already uh, seen and we have experienced, in fact, I need not explicitly explain this to you because we are all teachers and we can definitely understand uh, these simple uh, things. So with this, now uh, let's look at some of the benefits of e-learning for uh, specially able uh, students. So when I was, I was, when I was reading uh, some material related to this e-learning and online learning, I came across uh, these benefits and I thought I just wanted to share these things with you all. So the first thing is the learning disabilities. So many times you might have experienced in, uh, in and around environment, in your environment that, that some kids or even the adults may have a learning disabilities. So it may not be possible for uh, them to learn uh, the way the other kids learn. You might have noticed it. So for such kind of learning disabilities, uh, definitely the e-learning is a boon and according to their pace, according to their learning interest, according to uh, the other right, requirements, uh, it can be uh, it can be customized and it can be tailored. And with that, we can definitely uh, make the kids to learn according to their comfort zone. And that's what uh, learning disabilities mean, the people who have a learning disabilities. So definitely uh, the e-learning or online learning could be a better platform for them to learn and they can cope up with, their, uh, with others and they can meet their requirements. And even for the physical disabilities, right? So many times the people who have a physical disabilities cannot go to the campus the way the others are going to the campus because they are, they are all constrained, right? So uh, for such kind of uh, physical disabilities, uh, definitely e-learning is a platform. And again, they can learn whatever they want to learn with video lectures or uh, recorded uh, you know, material in their comfort zone and they can learn better uh, in the, you know, uh, with wherever they are. And another is the visual impairments. Uh, definitely the people with the visual impairments uh, may be difficult for them to uh, learn in a traditional environment. But with this e-learning or a technology-based learning will help them to learn better. Maybe they have a braille scripts and also the you know, audio uh, you know, you know, lectures, right? I mean, the data can be presented in a voice format. So uh, visual impaired people can also uh, learn in a better way with the support of e-learning. And also the hearing impaired people uh, can also learn better because uh, with every audio or video lectures uh, for hearing impaired, uh, subtitles can be displayed. Suppose if a video lecture is presented and the subtitles can help the hearing impaired people to uh, read and understand and they can map. Even uh, because you might have seen that uh, there is a news for hearing impaired, right? We call it as a sign language presentation. So even uh, we can record uh, a, a lecture uh, delivered by uh, such an expert who can present the information in a sign language form and the hearing impaired people can listen to that audio, I mean that video and they can understand. And in addition to that, we can also support with the subtitles. So that's how we can make the learning environment much more comfortable for the people who are especially able. So a lot of technology uh, can be, uh, tools can be used, right? And uh, with all the tools, uh, definitely we can offer a very good environment for all such specially able students with the support of 
the e-learning and finally even for the psychiatric disabilities right the people could not concentrate or cannot go to uh, traditional classrooms maybe because of some other uh, psychiatric problems and even for such people the e-learning could be a better platform uh, to teach and to learn and also uh, to overcome their limitations as well. So these are some of the uh, very interesting uh, things we can see uh, when it comes to uh, this technology and when it comes to the e-learning platform. So if at all you want to put together in a nutshell, the benefits of e-learning could be enumerated uh, as shown in the slide. Let's say it's a cost-effective, a consistent delivery, at employee speed, anytime at place, quick to update, good for large groups. Right, so these are uh, some of the uh, benefits to name a few uh, when it comes to e-learning environment. So uh, now, apart from these things, if at all we want to uh, get to the next level of detail, now let's look at the characteristics of uh, e-learning. So uh, we can just look at the e-learning environment uh, characterized with these parameters or attributes like content, then uh, collaboration and sharing, uh, delivery, administration, link to resources, and as well as the learner's control. So when it comes to the content, definitely the e-learning supports with a text content, video, graphics, and sound, or we call it as a multimedia content. Maybe in a traditional uh, environment, it may not be possible for us to put all of them together and we can present in one shot. But with the support of technology, and particularly in the e-learning environment, we can put all of them together. And we can put a text, and also we can use a video, and a graphics, and so on, everything, and we call it as a multimedia. And with this, we can make the uh, learning much more effective and efficient. Uh, apart from that, there is a collaboration sharing. There's a community of practice. Uh, for example, if uh, the people you know, the community of research. There is a community of research. All of you might have heard that there is a research gate and also LinkedIn. And many communities are there, right? Including your Facebook, Twitter, and all. They're all the social networks. So particularly for education uh, purpose, we have a research gate and other you know, forums where uh, the communities of practice say, for example, we can form a community uh, of research uh, who are carrying out a research on a particular discipline like maybe economics or a mathematics or a physics or a computer science and etc. So they can share and they can work together. They can express their ideas. They can share their ideas. They can interact each other and they can uh, pose any questions and ask, uh, ask questions from the people who know uh, about the topic and etc. That's how uh, the communities of practice. And the way the corporate people are interacting each other, uh, very similarly, we can also have a community and we can practice. The peers, right? So definitely we can interact with the people who are working in the same uh, field. That's how uh, we can contact them and we can connect them with the technology and we can learn other trainees, experts, mentors, and advisors. So all these people facilitates uh, the learning environment. That's a collaboration and sharing. And uh, when it comes to the delivery, definitely it can be an internet or internet, web, uh, distance learning, and CD-ROM. So these are some of the uh, technological aspects which we need to uh, take into account when it comes to the delivery of e-learning content. So not only this, even this e-learning platform supports the administrative activities like enrollment, monitoring, and uh, progress assessment. Okay. So uh, uh, now, the Karnataka state government has launched one uh, portal like Unified University College Management System, where they are going to record the details of the students and also uh, other you know, human, resource, uh, human resources and also the courses start and many aspects of education. So there are 10 different modules and each of those modules will support the institution at a greater extent and it minimizes the overall effort needed and uh, in managing uh, the institution day-to-day -day activities. So here, when it comes to this administration, like enrollment can happen online, 
and monitoring can also be done online and progress assessment can also be done online so that's how it reduces the burden from administration uh, part of you know uh, from administration part and in addition to that we also have link to resources like other training materials other web based training link to electronic performance support systems right and this will help us to get additional information regarding uh, the topic of our interest right and also uh, for the people who are carrying out the research or the people who want to learn a new technology so definitely those things can be supported with the additional information that is links to uh, the resources and all put together this a learner controls like a practice pacing feedback content and accessibility right so all these characteristics makes the e learning a, a very fantastic environment or a platform uh, to learn and to move further right with the knowledge so with this so when it comes to building an e learning culture okay so what are the various entities that interacts with the building an e learning culture so definitely the teacher plays a major role because he has to develop knowledge and the skills with the uh, people right with the students so he has the he has the uh, responsibility okay of getting a uh, new knowledge and sharing that knowledge with the students and help students to acquire the skills so understand learning and its need facilitate learning create learning opportunities so these are the responsibilities of a teacher in building a e learning culture so when it comes to the administrator he has to create a learning environment and provide infrastructure ict infrastructure resources for a lifelong learning so for example hrdc center at this point of time so definitely creates a learning environment for all of us and it provides ict infrastructure and also for a resource uh, resources for a long, lifelong learning so definitely every institution uh by who you know for any uh, reasons right so they have to switch out to the uh, new technology right so we cannot just go back to a, a traditional uh, system but traditional system will be there but apart from that we should also up get updated with the uh, new technology right so it is the role of the uh, responsibility of the administrator to create such an environment and provide ict infrastructure and also uh, resources for a lifelong learning from a learner point of view it's a self directed self motivated self regulating and a lifelong learning so definitely a self directed means a learner has a flexibility to learn whatever he wants and also he will be motivated many times when a student is listening to a new concept he may be motivated because the way it is presented will definitely uh, motivated that uh, student and he want to learn much more in the direction so a self motivated and also self regulating so this is another very important uh, thing so we must know what is relevant and what is not relevant okay so many times we say uh, you no know, uh, freedom without responsibility is definitely a dangerous thing right we have a freedom but at the same time we should have a responsibility then you may ask a question how can we control uh, the kids or the students because uh, many times you might have experienced that even the 3 year old kid is addicted to mobile and they want to see the online games right so uh, sometimes you can say it is a, a destructive way of learning but what we can do is at that point of time we have to regulate maybe the adults are the responsible people can regulate mm -hmm. but at the same time if at all we are providing an environment from a learning point of view so definitely there should be a restriction that what to learn what not to learn okay so with all that we can uh, control the learning environment and we should always provide the best things and which definitely in a uh, take the person in a positive direction not in a, a negative direction and of course a lifelong learning so there is no limit so you can learn right whenever you want and that's what is a lifelong learning so this how uh, the three uh, pillars are entities like a teacher administrator and a learner at a 
you know, at the outset, at the broader perspective, uh, can definitely build an e-learning culture. And with all that, they can create a learning environment, uh, a society where everybody can learn uh, high quality, uh, you know, understand uh, the high quality the concepts are concepts in a uh, very efficient way. So that's how uh, we can understand uh, the e-learning culture. So uh, having understand all these uh, general uh, concepts regarding e-learning, now let's look at a little more uh, technical aspects of e-learning and that's what e-learning approaches. So there are two general approaches to e-learning. One is self-paced, it is completely independent. And another is the instructor-led, where it provides different levels of support from tutors and instructors and collaboration among the learners. Okay, so uh, because in this Swayam platform or MOOCs courses, uh, there is an instructor who offers a course online, who provides all the material and the learning environment has been uh, created. And with that instructor-led, uh, the students who have enrolled for that particular course can learn in online environment. Okay, so there will be a student dashboard where in the student dashboard, the students will get all the materials related to the particular course and the assignments can be submitted online and the assessment can also be done online. The presentation, maybe if it's a seminar or any interactions with the tutor, it can be done online with all this, right? And the collaboration among other learners, we can learn the things in a better way and that's the instructor led. The other one is the self-paced. It's completely independent, right? So you have downloaded the video lectures, you have downloaded the audio lectures, you have a digital form, right? The textbooks in a digital form. And depending on your interest and depending upon your time and comfort zone, you can learn on your own way, right? So there is no time constraints as such. You can learn anytime, anyway. And of course, it all depends on uh, how much of effort you are putting in to learn. So accordingly, you can plan and you can learn. So there are two approaches to learning. One is the self-paced and also instructor-led. So I think here is an example. The visualization uh, helps you to uh, understand these things. So here, a, a person uh, can learn the things with uh, computer technologies or any other small devices uh, independently. But here is uh, there is an instructor who help the students to learn through an interaction. So the e-learning approaches can combine different types of e-learning components. One is the e-learning content we already mentioned, e-tutoring, e-coaching, and also e-mentoring, and the collaborative learning, and also a virtual classroom. So when it comes to the e-learning content, it can be a simple learning resources like a PowerPoint presentations or hangouts, okay? Or interactive e-lessons can also be presented and electronic simulations can be uh, given to the students and also the job aids. So with all these learning content, we can make the learning experience uh, much more uh, better in an on-learning uh, environment. So when it comes to simple learning resources, as we already pointed out, uh, it can be a word file or a PDF file or a PowerPoint presentation file, or it can be interactive e-lessons. So job aids and also electronic simulations, something like this, right? So uh, when it comes to e-tutoring, e-coaching, and e-mentoring, so e-tutoring, coaching, and mentoring provides individual support and feedback to the learners through online tools and uh, facilitation uh, techniques, uh, where in a collaborative learning uh, ranges from discussions and knowledge sharing to working together on a common project. So social software such as charts, discussion forums, and blogs are used for online collaboration among the learners. So now because the technology has become very common and very much familiar to each of, you know, all of us, so uh, definitely the WhatsApp could be one of the uh, platform many times we use for uh, sharing the information. And apart from the, the Facebook and uh, Twitter and other uh, you know, platforms can also be used for a collaborative learning. Okay. So where we have a discussion forums, blogs and other things so that we can learn better and we can interact with the people who have understood the concepts very well. And with that, through interaction, we can learn better. And that's what is a collaborative learning. So when it comes to the virtual classroom, is the instructional red method more similar to the traditional classroom training as it is led completely by the instructor. Uh, I think uh, many times we have seen that uh, 
during a lockdown period, uh, school going students, particularly from first standard to fifth standard, right? The teacher used to take classes uh, for an hour, right? And in that class, the teacher used to uh, teach the students uh, to uh, many instructional methods. Okay, so that's what is an example of a virtual classroom. And of course, when it comes to the quality of e-learning, it's a learner-centered content, granularity, engaging content, interactivity, as well as the personalization. Okay, so all these things uh, we have already discussed. And of course, it's not that difficult for us to understand. It's very uh, simple and self-explanatory. So uh, apart from this, when it comes to the learning methods, we have uh, two types of learning method. One is called asynchronous learning, another is called asynchronous learning. So in a synchronous learning, events take place in a real time. And uh, this virtual session could be an example of a synchronous learning where it happens in a real time. I'm delivering something at this point of time, I'm at this end and you are receiving at the other end. So this happens in a real time. So the synchronous communication between two people requires them to both be present at a given time. And the examples, chat conversations and audio video conferencing, et cetera, is uh, an example for asynchronous learning. So advantages could be learning happens in real time and participants can share their ideas during the training session. Continuous and immediate connection is possible. Trainers can personalize the training according to their need. So that's how the synchronous learning uh, helps the participants or the learners and also the teachers to deliver the things in a better way and learn accordingly, right? So the other one is called the asynchronous learning where asynchronous events are time independent and asynchronous e-learning takes place at any time. A self-faced course is an example for that. Email or a discussion forums are examples of asynchronous communication uh, tools. Because in a discussion forums or in email, we just send a mail, uh, maybe expressing our views or asking some clarifications or some doubts on some concepts and all. Uh, the other peer or in other people in the group can answer those questions and give their opinion, right? Or any comments on that. So that's how it happens. And by doing so, learning happens. And that's what is an asynchronous communication. So learning happens at a learner's convenience. Learners gain in-depth subject knowledge through such interactions. And learning is available just in time for instant access to knowledge. And training reaches all learners simultaneously. And there's a uniform learning across the organization at no extra cost. So these are some of the advantages of asynchronous learning. So uh, the other one is the blended learning, as we already mentioned in the beginning itself that, okay, so uh, in one, at one point of uh, view, we can say a blended learning is nothing but a traditional learning as well as uh, e-learning. And also in some other point of view, we can also uh, say it's a blended learning, it's a combination of the asynchronous and asynchronous learning, right? So a blended learning combines a different training media, technologies, activities, and events, uh, to create optimum training program for a specific audience. So it means a traditional instructor-led training is being supplemented with electronic formats, either in uh, asynchronous mode or in a uh, synchronous mode in any way. So all put together is called a blended learning. So the advantages are organizations can improve training and learning effectiveness. There's an extended reach, development cost and time can be optimized. Business results can also be optimized. Okay, so these are some of the benefits of the uh, blended learning. So if at all we want to compare the traditional uh, versus uh, online or e-learning methods, now look at uh, the parameters here, the classroom, a physical a limited size and a synchronous. Uh, if at all I want to teach in one short, uh, I mean in one instant of time uh, for the students of more than 60, maybe the classroom may not support right, because of a limited uh, size, the physical size. And also it has to happen in the synchronous mode only. So there's no question of asynchronous mode. The teacher is there in the class and the students have to listen to the teacher and the teacher delivers something, the students have to listen to the class and that's how. But when it comes to the e-learning, it's unlimited, 
right? The participants could be 100, the participants could be 1,000, or even sometimes 10,000, it doesn't matter. So it is unlimited, anytime and anywhere, okay? So anywhere, definitely, and anytime, we already understood, right? So that's what is the e-learning. The content here, uh, of course, even in a traditional classroom, many times we have used a PowerPoint transparency, textbooks library, and video and collaboration. But definitely this has been upgraded in the e-learning environment uh, to a multimedia uh, simulation. Uh, for example, you want to teach a titration in chemistry or some simulations in biology, okay, or in physics, some, you want to explain Monte Carlo experiments in uh, physics, okay, or you want to uh, animate the story in uh, history or in English, or you want to present a drama, etc. So definitely the multimedia and simulation helps us to present the content in a uh, better way or in a, visualize, uh, in, a, in a visualization so that uh, the content can be delivered in a very efficient and effective way. So definitely it's supported with the digital library and it could be on demand. That is, you can search and you can get whatever the content you want or whatever the material you want. That's what is the on demand. And it could be synchronous and asynchronous communication. So definitely. So when it comes to the personalization, one learning path, here learning path and pace are determined by the learner. So why is one learning path in a traditional classroom, right? The student has to attend the class and the teacher is going to deliver and whatever that has been delivered to the student and the student has to learn that, okay? So maybe sometimes the teacher can take a class for continuously for two hours and the teacher can deliver more content, right? In, the, in those two hours, right? But maybe sometimes students cannot uh, understand that entire content, uh, which is covered in two hours, right? Uh, but in case of e-learning, it is not like that. The learning path and the pace can be determined by the learner. How much you want, you can learn accordingly. For example, today you are in a good mood and you are in a very comfortable zone and you can uh, listen to more than an hour and you can learn more content. Maybe on some other day or some other time, you are not that comfortable and you don't have that mood of listening to our learning. So then definitely you can just limit your uh, time duration for a learning. So that's how it's a personalization. So learning path and pace can be determined by the uh, user. So in summary, uh, traditional versus e-learning. So e-learning a student center, uh, traditional learning a teacher center. Uh, e-learning multimedia, traditional learning single media. It's a collaboration work, it's an isolated work. Information exchange, information delivery, skill-based and factual-based, and technology-enabled learning, a brick and board, a pull approach, and a post approach. So this is how we can uh, precisely uh, compare the traditional versus e-learning methods. So with this uh, detail, now let's look at the e-learning process. So I quickly summarize the e-learning process. Uh, because many times, if at all, an institution wants to offer an e-learning course, then how can we go ahead with this process? And even the University Grant Commission has given an opportunity for the faculties to offer a course online under Swayam or uh, MOOC platform. And definitely the university or UGC uh, can grant some money to those faculties who are willing to offer a course online. So in such cases, how this e-learning process is done? How to go ahead with this? For example, if any of a faculty wants to offer a course online, how we have to go ahead? So uh, some information about this is really uh, worth attending. Now let's look at here, a successful e-learning organizations use this ADDI process of developing an e-learning course and acronym stands for analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. So this ADDI stands for this analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. And this is visualized in this diagram. Analyze, then design, develop, implement, and then evaluate. Now look at, let's look at this, this model of e-learning, our model for this e-learning. So what we need to analyze? Needs analysis. For example, you are designing a course related to uh, mathematics or economics, 
or it can be an English or any other discipline for that matter, then definitely you need to understand to what class of audience you are going to deliver this content. For example, if you're delivering a content to uh, uh, you know, students at uh, you know, 10 plus two level or students at uh, uh, primary school level or high school level, then the content should be presented to that level only. If you are presenting a content to a researchers or a postgraduate students, then definitely your way of presentation might be something different. So first we need to understand the need. It's as good as whenever you are writing a textbook, you are going to analyze what are the things that are needed and to what class of audience you are going to uh, present and what content you are going to present in that textbook, which reflects the title and the domain. Okay, so very similarly here, whenever we are uh, preparing e-learning content or whenever we are uh, using this e-learning process, we need to understand the need and the target audience analysis, task and the topic analysis. So once we understand this, then we move on to the design where we understand the learning objectives, sequencing of those objectives, instructional strategy, how to deliver and delivery strategy, and then again, evaluation strategy. So uh, once we understand the design, then we move on to the development where the content development plays a significant role and then storyboard development and courseware uh, development. When it comes to the implementation, how to install and distribute this and managing learners activities are the important uh, tasks. Then when it comes to the evaluation, the reactions, learnings, behavior, and then results. So uh, whatever we have experienced in traditional learning, okay? Of course, all these things are not new except few technological advancements they are all there in the traditional learning as well. But if at all we were moving to a you know, technology environment or digital learning or e-learning environment, then these things should be supported by the technology and accordingly we have to build a technology, okay? So uh, when it comes to the analysis, the need analysis allows the identification of a general high-level course goals. So definitely many of you are already familiar with uh, uh, NBA accreditation or NAC accreditation. Uh, for every program, there should be a program outcomes. And for every course, there should be a course outcomes, right? And then we have to see how the course outcomes fulfill the program outcomes and uh, what you expect uh, from that program and what level of skill the students can acquire and how it helps that student uh, to be placed in a company's art, to can get a job or even self-employment or entrepreneurship and et cetera. So that's how uh, we need to understand all those things. So general high-level course goals and the target audience analysis allows to identify the key characteristics of the learners. Their previous, you know, previous knowledge and skills, geographical prominence, learning content across now, access to technology, everything plays a significant role uh, in this particular task. And then the task analysis, which identifies the job task that the learner should learn and improve the knowledge and skills that need to be developed or reinforced. And the topic analysis is carried out to identify and classify the course content. So this is the first level, okay? So having understand this, then we can move on to the design. Even many of you may be the authors of the textbook, and whenever you are writing a textbook, definitely you have done all these things. But now we are thinking of these activities from a technology point of view, that's all, okay? So when it comes to the design, formulating a set of learning objectives required to achieve the general high-level course objective and defining the order in which the objective should be achieved, that is the sequencing, that's how uh, the chapters are sequenced, okay? Maybe initially we're going to teach the very fundamentals, and gradually we take the students to the advanced concepts. Very similar here also, uh, we have to follow such a sequencing so that the learners can better understand. And selecting instructional media, uh, evaluation and delivery strategies as well, okay? So next is the development. There's a content development and storyboard development, courseware development. Of course, this is, uh, these things are quite technical uh, and we can get a support from the technical uh, staff to develop the content. Okay, what to put in the content, whether the content need to be uh, supported with the video or a voice or any other illustrations for better understanding of that particular concept. Okay, and again, the storyboard development where 
integrating instructional methods and media with images, text, interactions, assessment, test, everything, because we have to present this storyboard you know, to the student where the student's interaction happens here and then the uh, instructor can assess all those things. So we can put images, the text and interactions as well as the assessments can be done. And the other very interesting point is the courseware development where developing media and interactive components, producing the course in a different formats like a CD-ROM and web delivery and integrating the content elements into the learning platform that the learner can access. Okay, so this all amounts to uh, development. A little more uh, technical support is needed in understanding and uh, performing this particular activity. And of course, the implementation as well as the evaluation happens in online, uh, which is supported by the uh, platform. Okay, so that's what you might have heard that learning management system, uh, where uh, these things can be taken into account in this learning management system uh, supported uh, environment or a software. So with this, uh, there's a students and instructor, the master courses, content delivery, course collaboration, progress tracking, assignments, proctees, and exams. So these are the sequence of activities which we can see uh, in this learning management system in the e uh, online environment, okay? So with this, now, uh, if at all, I want to highlight some of the tools which are needed to support this uh, learning management system or online and e-learning environment. The email is very common and we are all very much familiar and uh, we have been using this from the past two decades, I believe. So every teacher should have an email account and communicate with students, communicate with parents. Our students can submit assignment, can have attachments, create a paperless environment, uh, simple but effective, efficient and cost effective and it's self-explanatory. Uh, each one of you can agree with each of these points mentioned here with respect to this email. There is the chart like synchronous communication tool, communicate with students, communicate with parents, more students participate and collaborate to learning. Okay, so the platforms like Zoom, Google Meet, or WebEx, or any other uh, platforms can be used as a uh, you know, platform for a charting purpose. That's so, and this could be one of the examples uh, where it happens in a real time, that's a synchronous communication tool, okay? Then online form is an asynchronous discussion forum, something like a research gate or a LinkedIn or a Facebook, it could be, or even the WhatsApp can also be used as an online form, right? It's an asynchronous discussion form. A teacher can create a discussion groups. A teacher could post a question and request students to comment. Students can post their comments and can encourage community participation. Collaborative learning can be fostered and feedback from diverse culture can also be accepted accordingly. Uh, we can understand much better. So the other is the web. A wide range of materials are made available. Teacher will need to narrow down them uh, for a particular uh, target audience whenever he, uh, she is offering a course. Then it's a resource center, no doubt in it, and sharing of resources supported by images, audio simulation, as well as the multimedia. So this is a video conference tool where we can conduct a live lecture, communication with students, communication with parents, support by audio, chat and whiteboard, support sharing of applications can be recorded and later be used for on-demand lectures and also could be supported with a demo. So all these things can be done in a video conference tool. So of course, all these things are not new to you. And uh, because of, uh, no, uh, uh, no, during this uh, pandemic, we all have experienced and we have become very much familiar to all of these tools and the technologies, okay? If at all you want to uh, make use of this uh, at a you know, greater extent, then a little more knowledge and a practice is required. I think that can be done with whatever the knowledge we have acquired so far. The only thing is the interest and the uh, requirement. That's all the matter. So with this, now, if you look at the SWOT analysis, right, definitely, as I already mentioned in the beginning itself, that any technology uh, comes with some advantages as well as some limitations. So in that context, if you look at the e-learning platform, definitely it has some strengths, weakness, opportunities, as well as the threat. I quickly summarize uh, these points uh, and share with you. 
So the strength is ability to offer education to large number of students from a distant locations. We are already quite uh, familiar and we understood this. Education is more accessible to people with a limited financial resources. So definitely, if at all we want to learn the courses which are offered in uh, Harvard University, or uh, Michigan State University, or any other uh, top class university, it may be difficult for us to go there and learn, right? Because my financial, uh, you know, uh, financial condition may not support that. But it doesn't matter, right? Whether you are at home or you know, uh, in a college or an office, but we can definitely access to those things, and that's so you can continue learning, right? So that's what is the meaning here. And less than commitment necessary for a corporate students and uh, best instructors making best courses available to all. So these are some of the uh, strengths. But when it comes to the weakness, large commitment to technology needed from universities and corporations offering e-learning courses. So this is, of course, is a requirement uh, without the technology, without a good infrastructure, uh, it may not be possible for us to deliver the content uh, as expected or uh, to the satisfactory level. So this one commitment and lack of face-to-face -face contact with the students. So of course, this uh, inherent uh, limitation of uh, e-learning environment. Current technology does not support the low cost, high bandwidth synchronous student teacher interaction. But of course, now uh, I think this problem uh, would have been addressed to a certain extent. Okay, maybe in the coming years, in the next decade, uh, I think because of more and more advancements in the technology, a lot of research and development happening. And with all that, uh, definitely uh, we can overcome this limitation or the weakness. But maybe today we are uh, you know, uh, facing a few such uh, issues, but I don't think it's that difficult and definitely it can be uh, addressed, right? So the opportunity means ability to reach the world instantaneously with the latest news and technology that's already familiar to all of us. Ability to train sales force and employees about the product advancements. That's also done. Uh, for example, if at all you want to uh, get information about a particular product, maybe a car or a mobile or a laptop or any uh, item, right? So you can read the reviews about the product and you can purchase or you can get an online demo and you can judge and you can decide. So even uh, the corporate people can train the sales force and employees about the product advancements. All those things can happen with the support of this e-learning environment. Access to courses from a variety of universities and decrease long-term education expenses by shifting learning programs to the web. So definitely uh, for students and who are carrying out the research, uh, definitely there is a one component that's a literature survey. How can we do a literature survey, right? So definitely in olden days, maybe uh, two decades back, we used to go to Indian Institute of Science or any other Indian Institute of Technology or other universities. And we, you, we used to spend a lot of time there to get just some articles uh, zaraxed, okay? But now the problem is solved, right? So you can have access to online uh, libraries, the courses or research materials, or just by paying a nominal fee, you can get access to all the recent research articles and the journals, and you can definitely uh, learn better, right? So that's what access to courses from a variety of universities also possible and decrease long-term education expenses by shifting learning programs to the web. And the threat could be lack of student interest. Uh, this is a very challenging issue and uh, definitely we need to find a way to address this particular uh, problem because it's again related to the uh, mental status of the student and again related to the psychology. So equipment and technology requirement restrict the adoption of e-learning. Of course, that is true. A uh, lot of funding is needed and infrastructure is needed. Lack of human interaction deepens the learning process. Okay, so some people comment on this, some people accept it, and some people deny this. Again, it's left to uh, your perception, right? Some people found it advantageous, and some people found it uh, as a disadvantage, right? It's a, like a debatable uh, question. And most corporate instructor-led courses last four to five days. Comprehensive coverage of some topics could be lost in a shorter e course. And of course, this is another thing, uh, but it could be easily addressed. 
okay because many times just to speed up uh, we can wind up everything and we can compress it but it doesn't matter if we can extend it and we can make it a little more uh, descriptive elaborative and uh, we can ensure that whether the expected content has been delivered uh, with a, you know acceptable pace and the instructors have learned it so i think that can definitely be ensured and this is no longer a threat and can be easily addressed so with this uh, i just wanted to uh, highlight some of the top e learning companies uh, byzus i think you have already seen in the advertisements that byzus learning app okay and even a lot of students have taken the byzus uh, e learning courses and they also train for uh, iit jeepley cat gre ias and many more such exams so they go uh, online train the byzus of course they charge more uh, but support suppose if these kind of supports are uh, or initiations are taken care by the governments so definitely it can be afforded with a less cost uh, to all the uh, people uh, to the community or uh, the society so other is edexless education another is educom solutions and uh, igno nait educot uh, simply learn gs learning uh, merit nation excel sub all these are the top e learning companies in india who offers uh, online uh, e learning education uh, to the community right so with this uh, when it comes to the e learning platform uh, moocs there is massive open online courses using coursera and uh, future learn virtual learning environment such as learn or blackboard video streaming services such as youtube you are already familiar with this and virtual instructor led training like webex and webinars uh, discussion boards like facebook and whatsapp forums like linkedin and research gate podcast like a recorded program of talk or a music so all these things are the various e learning platforms uh, which we are quite familiar with few of these things and of course you can explore and you can easily understand that so uh, when it comes to this moocs uh, of course many of you are already familiar it's a uh, you no know, massive open online courses and the students can register online and you can learn online and is evaluated online and whatever the credits and with that uh, can be uh, used for the regular degree and that's how uh, it to a certain extent uh, makes little more you know given more flexibility to the students uh, in a learning environment that's what is the uh, moocs course so some of the uh you no know, platform e learning platforms are uh, udemy a huge variety of courses 30 day refund policy free certificates of completion and udacity nano degree programs suitable for enterprises paid certificates of completion data camp free certificates of completion focused on data science uh, skills flexible learning timetable and edx university level courses suitable for enterprises paid certificates of completion so this for a, a information i have just mentioned coursera skillshare uh, linkedin learning and khan academy are uh, many more so with all this uh, i just want to uh, summarize this uh, e learning online uh, platforms and all so e learning is a convenient option for organizations in certain situations when there is a need to reach many geographically dispersed learners the first thing in a self paced e learning course learner can study course materials at any time they wish facilitated and instructor led e learning courses use communication tools which allow learners to communicate with facilitators and other participants in a blended approach e learning sessions can be integrated with face to face traditional activities using a wide variety of approaches and in this e learning process a series of activities are required to develop e learning according to the edd model which involves design uh, analysis design development implementation and evaluation so technology is needed both to create e learning material and make it accessible to the learners so with this in conclusion ict and e learning offers opportunity to raise education standards in the school large range of ict tools are available for teaching and learning and close the gap of digital divide involvement of teachers and parents is important schools will need funding access and training so this what is the 
final conclusion. And here are some of the references which I have used uh, to prepare this content and to share with you all. So with this, uh, I would like to thank you all, right? And uh, first of all, I would like to thank HRDC uh, for having given this opportunity to share a few of my uh, ideas on this topic with you all today. And I also thank all the participants for your patience listening. And uh, now I request you uh, to interact in case if there are any questions or any interactions as such. Thank you for the presentation, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Please. Uh, myself, Dr. Sanmati Kumar. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, my question is related to that uh, online and e learning, both having advantages and disadvantages. Yes, sir. There is one disadvantage to the children's that yes, a sir. sense of isolation will be created. <laughs> yes, students sir. can learn more lot from being a company of the peers and students and teachers. Yes, sir. What is your opinion, sir? What about this? Sir, definitely, sir. Definitely. So here, actually, online learning or e-learning, it doesn't mean that we have to replace the traditional way of learning, sir, actually. Okay. So it's like a supplementary learning. Supplemental learning. Uh, for example, the kid is going to the school and whatever that has been delivered in the school, uh, maybe because of the intelligent quotient of the kid or the learning abilities, the kid may not get all that has been delivered in the class. So maybe if such kids, if we supplement with uh, additional uh, you know, uh, simulations or anything as such in an e-learning environment, then the skill can, you know, the kid can pick up the skills of learning so that it can, uh, that, is, uh, you know, the, that kid can definitely meet the requirements as defined by the particular standards, okay? Maybe first standard, second standard, third standard, or something like that. So that is from the uh, children point of view. So again, from say, for example, uh, the college going students, okay? So definitely we can't expect everything to be delivered in a classroom sessions because there are many other constraints, sir, right? There are many other constraints. We can't expect a teacher to deliver everything in the class. So we have a syllabus and we are rushing how to cover the syllabus. But here, if uh, such things are supported with additional uh, you know, materials, suppose you have created a video lecture or an audio lecture or additional demonstrations can be shared with the students, maybe in the offline, the students can uh, listen to those audio lectures or video lectures or additional supplementary materials. They can come prepare for the next session so that they can get a curiosity in understanding your lecture. Right, and also if there are anything to be clarified, then definitely uh, they can interact with you better. So that's how it is not that we are going to replay the traditional learning uh, environment because the traditional learning environment is also very much important for our other uh, development, right? Because we are a social animal. We have to interact with the people physically and we have to feel that the environment actually. But here, uh, the e-learning and online learning or whatever this technology is a additional or support actually, right? So because definitely for employees, let us assume that uh, you know after master, after bachelor degree, a, a student may join a company, right? A corporate company or any company. He's a mechanical engineer or a computer engineering or any other engineering for that matter. But he has an ambition of learning uh, further. Maybe you want to acquire a MTech degree or you want to carry out the doctoral you know, research and etc. So maybe because half his time and because of other financial constraints, he may not be able to go to the regular school. Right? He cannot go to uh, join a MTech program in uh, best institutions or he cannot get a, uh, an, a enroll for a research degree. Right? Maybe because of the time and the financial stand, the status of the a person may not uh, support him. But in such situations, definitely this online learning or this e-learning can definitely support in such cases so that in spite of 
uh, those uh, limitations, uh, we can continue a lifelong learning and we can definitely improve our skill and we can cope up with uh, maybe our working environment or in our uh, regular day-to-day -day, uh, you know, activities and all. So that's what is the actual idea, sir. So definitely uh, there is a limitation as we find it out, uh, but we need to handle it in a uh, very wise way, right? Okay, okay yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, sir. Uh, oh, sir, namaste. Namaskar, sir. I'm adding, adding to you. Whatever you were actually mentioning, certainly I'm adding to you because uh, because of online teaching, uh, all of us are meeting now. <laughs> yes, the offline class, how it can be? And you already mentioned about uh, the cast and everything and uh, lots of advantages are there. Of yes. course, we should have our traditional teaching. Okay, that should be. But uh, we have to make an idea of a 70-30 ratio or 80-30 ratio, <laughs> wherever it is possible, it is yes, sir. To have online teaching. Exactly. And that's, uh, our traditional teaching. We exactly. Sir. Definitely, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Your observations and understanding is 100% uh, correct. Like, uh, uh, you know, we can make it a little more precise that uh, this must be 50%, this must be 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Of course. Uh, that is true in a uh, regular uh, learning environment in the universities. But mm -hmm. apart from that, when it comes to a personal learning, uh, mm -hmm. always it can be depending upon the learner's interest and the pace. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Nice. Uh, I'm Manju Lakshi. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, e-learning, e particularly one and a half year, we are facing a lot of problems, sir. <laughs> so, so not only for faculty, yeah. even our student almost are they are staying in rural background. Okay. So they are not very remote area they are staying. Very difficult to they are joining uh, online okay. classes also. Even very difficult to conduct uh, examination <laughs> also. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I, that's there, madam. Uh, yes. I mean, it is not uh, with the you no know, technology point of view, but it is the infrastructure point of view, madam. And of course, uh, if at all we want to address those issues, it's always uh, coupled with uh, finance and other things. But even it is there in other way around, madam. For example, if a student in a very remote place may not be able to uh, study in a uh, high standard universities and uh, other universities, right? So he has to be happy with whatever is there in the uh, local uh, place, okay? So, but definitely in the next decade, right? Because of these advancements, we can make sure that every person can get access to this internet technologies and also with the affordable, affordable prices and even the government can take the initiation. Uh, for example, if there is a, a remote village, maybe the government can take an initiation that uh, whichever the nearest uh, you know, place, okay, which the people can easily travel, and maybe there could, there could be a learning center where all these infrastructure facilities and uh, tools and technologies are equipped with, where, where the students can go there and learn. That can also be done, right? But here, because of this pandemic, all of a sudden, uh, we have, we, you know, there was a requirement that we have to uh, shift to the online mode because earlier we did not have foreseen this, right? And even, the students were not equipped with, the universities were not equipped with, and also the institutions were not. So, but now we are gradually uh, adjusting to this environment, but it is not that we have to conduct everything in online mode only. I have already pointed out. It is not that we have to conduct everything in online mode, but here, this online and e-learning is a additional resources, a supplementary to education, right? Supplementary to education, and I also pointed out uh, what are the benefits? What we need to do is, based on our requirement, okay, we have to optimize the benefits, okay? So, as we I pointed out that, uh, uh, for example, if a kid wants to learn a particular course, which is not offered in a particular school or an institution, then definitely such things can be made possible for that particular child or a kid or a student by going online, right? So for example, I want to learn a particular uh, language, uh, like a, a liter you know, English literature or a French literature or whatever it may be. So I don't find a tutor who can teach the subject. Right? Even in our computer science domain also, there are a lot of new technologies or new courses 
where the faculties are not trained and they are not able to teach those courses, right? For example, in our University of Mysore, let us assume that there are a few courses uh, which the teachers are not very well trained to teach those advanced courses. Then how can we offer those courses for our students and we can make our students be ready for industry requirement? So then the best option is we can request the uh, highly uh, skilled and professionals who are working for uh, you know, uh, very reputed companies uh, like uh, uh, Google or Microsoft or Oracle or something like that. And those people can deliver a course in an online mode. Our students can attend and they can get benefit out of that. So this is what is the idea, right? Of course, as you pointed out that definitely a present situation in our country like India, we have such uh, you know, requirements and we are facing a lot of problems, but it all you know, demands uh, finance and also attention by the government, right? Maybe in a, you know, every year they are going to keep some budget. So definitely there will be budgets for a technology implement as well. So how can they can identify all the things and how can they invest and how can they make the country uh, you know, uh, more, you know, I mean, uh, you know, infrastructure wise more advanced so that they can ensure that each and every student starts from uh, you know, primary school till a master graduate programs, they can get access to technology easily. So I think that can be definitely made possible and it all at the ends of the uh, government or whoever uh, who are you know, responsible for that. I don't think it's a difficult task. It all requires a funding and our attention to uh, work together in the direction. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. It is also uh, difficult to afford uh, students from economically weaker section. Regarding what, sir? Um, this type of service. This type of? Service. OK. It is also difficult to afford uh, the students from economically weaker section. OK, so actually, uh, see, uh, for example, if a student wants to learn in a top class university, definitely the fees will be high, sir. Right, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, for example, if I expect, a, uh, for example, a Microsoft CEO or Google CEO to come and present uh, give a course in our university, it's not affordable, sir, for us. Because those top class people are getting a salary more than uh, you know, 150 close to 300 course per year, right? So we can't expect them to deliver a lecture coming over to our university regarding the technology. But it is possible that they can uh, you know, give a video lecture on the technology and that video lecture can be shared across all universities right and the students can listen to it and definitely they can conduct the online as we already mentioned a synchronous uh, synchronous video lecture conferencing where the students can interact and get updated with the technology and what is their expectations and what is their future targets how students who are studying uh, uh, technical courses can be get updated with the uh, new technology what is the requirement so everything can